The Canamity roster has finally dropped for this upcoming CONCACAF Nations League matches in March and it's a very exciting roster with a couple dual nationals as well and a huge surprise in Tom McGill and Victor Latore finally getting that much deserved call up that all Canadian fans have been waiting for. Of course some surprises and shocks as well with the likes of Jacob Schaffelberg and Kyle Hebert even being left out but it might just be too soon for those players to get a call up but it's a very exciting roster guys which we're going to break down but guys welcome back to on the rise with the latest canamity news and this is a very exciting canadian roster that's been called upon and i am absolutely loving it with the likes of dominic zator being called upon and even another campiella in victor latori but it's an amazing roster it's a very exciting roster at that even seeing the likes of tom mcgill i know a lot of people won't know much about tom mcgill but i know a little bit which i will break down on him tom mcgill is a very exciting goalkeeper that i've hoped that would get a call up for some time of course a bright new 23 academy goalkeeper of course born in canada but truly raised in england where he's played through all of their academy systems while in england playing for the u16s u17s u19s and even the u20s of late the 22 year old canadian goalkeeper right now of course in england dual national as well has now gotten that call up through john herdman and it's very interesting because nobody really expected tom mcgill to get this call up i know a lot of people don't know much about him playing for the brighton u21s he has had a couple call ups to play for the first team with brighton in the cup competition serving as a backup a couple of times but never really stepping in the brighton first team of course they have an unbelievable goalkeeper there robert sanchez but tom mcgill is a very exciting goalkeeper and i am very much here for him to get this call up i would love to even see him get a start here for these concaf nations league games it'll truly see how much Herbman is really all in on Tom McGill. If he sees him as the next starter, which I truly do, I think him and Dane St. Clair are going to take the reins, and it's going to be very interesting to see how it ends up. Of course, we still have Goodman in the wings as well, which is another very exciting dual national who didn't get a call up, of course, but he is still another English Canadian dual national goalkeeper as well. We're very rich in Canadian dual national goalkeepers, and Tom McGill for me is the cream of the crop. I think he's the best one, and I would love to see us lock him down. Give him a start, let him see what he can do. Of course, me Milan Boyan is 35 years of old. He's not getting any younger. We can't keep riding him out for the long term. And Dane St. Clair and Tom McGill are the next man's up, in my opinion. And I think Tom McGill should get a start this window. Of course, go out and win that Curacao game and give Tom McGill the next game. Give him that chance. Give him the start. And let's see what he can do. Of course, it's we got a great team. Of course, Tom McGill probably won't see a lot of shots coming his way. But it's going to be a very good test for him. Let him step in. Let him lock down that dual national spot and make him Canadian. I'm very excited to see that call up. I think it's a very interesting one at that for a lot of Canadian fans who probably don't know a heck of a lot about Tom McGill, but it's a very interesting call up and it's a great way to freshen up the squad and get a dual national in the door. But a player that I know a lot of you guys will be screaming out for me to talk about and it's Victor Latore. Victor Latore is a player on the channel that I have been talking about for some time. Another player, Charles Andreas Brim, who I always read about, which I'll talk about in a second as well, but Victor Latore is every everyone's fan favorite to get talking about and he is the true next number six that I think Canada's going to have we've had Akiba Hutchinson hold that reign for some time and Victor Latore is the next man up to take that job and I think he's going to do a terrific job extremely young at 21 years of age of course was called up earlier in the week by South Sudan which got everyone in a absolute panic but you just got to stay calm you got to stay cool and collective and have the hope in John Herman and he's pulled through again with another dual national which I think Victor Latore is easily going to get that that cap tie it's very much going to happen he's 21 he's a great defensive midfielder he can play at the 10 not the 10 he can play at the 6 the 8 he's a very versatile midfielder as well great at spreading the ball around winning a tackle he's looked very good for ross county this season you can count on every game to basically give you a 7 out of 10 performance around that he's been very good and it's a very exciting player to have on the call up i'm very excited to see him get the call 21 years of age a young new exciting player that brings into this great crop of talent that canada truly does have it's another nice depth piece 
and I think he will be great to back up Stefan Ostakio or Ismail Kone in that 4-4-2 system, which I truly think we have to be going with. If we want to play the 4-3-3, look at that midfield now. Stefan Ostakio, you got Ismail Kone, and now you have Victor Latore sitting at the heart of that midfield. It's a beautiful system in the midfield now, and I'm great and very excited to see him get cap tied this window. And another player I really have to talk about, who I know is a fan favorite on my channel, who I love to talk about, is Charles Andreas Brim. I know a lot of fans probably don't like this call-up and might not think it's a great call-up. Of course, you guys can say, oh, he plays in the second league in in Holland, in the second Dutch division. But you guys got to look at what he's produced this season. He's been absolutely phenomenal, and he has been brilliant week in and week out. 21 matches, 7 goals, 5 assists, with, a, with an overall rating of 7.41. That's absolutely fantastic. You got to look at some of his games lately, a 7.1, 7.3, 8.2. He's been absolutely brilliant this year for FC Eindhoven and continues to play at a great form. Yes, he is still not the oldest either. He's still at 24. He is still very young. Yes, you could say it's not very young, but for me, I still think it's a decently young footballer who can still learn a lot in his game. He is a very versatile footballer as well, which John Herbin will absolutely love. He can change and play different formation systems during the 90, whether you want to change it up, whether you're losing, winning, he's able to come on. He's an energetic player. He's a game changer, and I think he's a very exciting player. He's a player who can also play at the 10, which Canada lacks a lot of them, in my opinion. But Charles Andreas Brim can also play outside left, can also play on the right, down the middle as a false nine, a striker, as well as a 10. He is an abundance of different positions in his bag, and I think it's a great player to have in the squad. But guys, I've talked about through most of the bigger surprises, but I just want to quickly run through the roster. I know you guys have probably all seen it by now if you're watching this video, it's quite obvious, but I'm just going to run through the positions quite quickly for you guys so it doesn't get a drag on here. Goalkeepers, of course, guys, were Milan Boyan, Tom McGill, the big surprise on the list, and Dane St. Clair. Fullbacks, you got Samuel Adekubi as the lone left back on the list, which really was no big surprise to anyone, as we don't really have that much depth in that position outside of Alexa Raheem Edwards or even Ryan Raposo, which I don't think they're really ready for that call up, but Ryan Raposo does have a lot of potential, in my opinion. Of course, center backs, guys, with the likes of Derek Cornelius, Scott Kennedy, Kamal Miller, Steve Vittoria. And of course, right back, you got three options here. And Alistair Johnson, who of course leads the list, Richie Larea, and Dominic Zator. Zator can, of course, play center back or right back, a very versatile player. Midfielders, a great group of players who I love. It's Chef Nostakio, Atiba Hutchinson, Mark Anthony K, Ismail Kone, Victor Latore, and Jonathan Osorio. Up front, Iowa Akinoa, Charles Andreas Brim, Tejon Buchanan, Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, and Kyle Laren. Tejon Buchanan, I love. I think he's a very versatile player now. Well, if you want to play right wing, right wing back, right back, he can play anywhere. We've seen this under Scott Parker and, of course, under all of his managers now at Club Budapest. And I think he's got a very interesting set of skills. And I think more so. So he should be more adapted to a right wing back role, but it's going to be very interesting to see what formation John Herman likes to go with now moving forward after the World Cup. I think he would have learned a lot after that World Cup. I think he's either going to go with a 4-4-2 system or a 4-3-3. It'll be very interesting to see what he chooses though. Of course guys, I have to talk about these two, the MLS guys and Kyle Hebert and the likes of my man Jacob Schaffelberg. It's a very interesting topic, of course. I know a lot of Canadians will be hollering. We should have called them up. Where are they? Why aren't they on the squads? Guys, it's a bit too soon for these players. I know Kyle Hebert's been absolutely phenomenal for the much watch side in the MLS in St. Louis City. Getting the call up, he's been absolutely brilliant since being on the roster and starting scoring a goal, getting them a match winning goal. He's been fantastic. And you can't doubt that from Kyle Hebert. But it's too soon too early, guys. The MLS just started. If you're not an out-and-out -out Canadian starter or lock right now, it's really hard to go out and say that these guys had to be called up. Just like Jacob Schaffelberg. You couldn't have had a much better start to an MLS season for Jacob Schaffelberg, playing with one of the best players, arguably maybe the best player in the league, and Hani Mukhtar. He's looked absolutely phenomenal, scoring a couple goals, going forward with a brilliant play, energetic, very exciting. It reminds me very much of the like likes of Dwight McNeil. He is, works his backside off defensively and offensively he scores of course a lot more goals than Dwight McNeil but he's an obvious um player to compare him to with the likes of his work rate and his excitement I really like what Jacob Schaffelberg brings and I think you give him the gold cup or coming up in the next window I think Jacob Schaffelberg will easily get that call up and it's very interesting to see that we're talking about players like Jacob Schaffelberg and all these other players but 
I never would have imagined we'd have a time where we have players like Theo Corbinu, Liam Miller, guys who are playing in Europe. Yes, they're not getting a lot of game time, but they're still on decent, very good clubs within Europe, and they're not even getting a true look in right now. That shows... I know you might look at the squad and think, we don't have a lot of depth in certain areas, we don't have a lot of depth within the squad that we can trust, but you just gotta think, what moment in time would you ever imagine that we would have a player at FC Basel in Liam Miller that isn't really getting talked about right now? For me, I think, I'm gonna make a video saying I think he needs a transfer away from FC Basel, but... Who would have ever imagined that we'd have a player at FC Basel or Arminia Bielfeld in, in Theo Corbinu of, away from Wolves that aren't really getting any talk about, aren't really getting a look in? Yes, they're not getting time. But it's amazing to see that we're not full MLS FC. We're not unattached FC anymore. This is a great Canadian side. I don't care. The fact that we're arguing about a player in the Dutch second, divi second division who's been scoring goals and getting assists for fun, or a guy in Ak Iowa Akinola who we fought so hard to get as a dual national and is now Canadian, yes, he has not been brilliant, but he does have a lot of potential still. The fact that we're talking about all these guys ahead of players in Europe who are on great teams, it's so exciting, and it's truly amazing right now to be a Canadian uh, fan and Canadian supporter, because this is the right time to be a Canadian fan, and we have such a brilliant squad. It is a very exciting roster. And it's very hard to pick holes and give you negatives right now because all I want to do is be excited for the squad, be excited for this roster, and there's not really a way you can be negative about the squad that he's chosen. Yes, I'm not excited to see Iowa and Ola in there, but I think he still has a lot of potential in him. He just needs to be starting somewhere. Whether that's transfer away from Toronto FC, fair play. Whether Jacob Schaffelberg isn't called up, you can't argue too much with that. Getting a shout for Tom McGill is so exciting. You've got Dominic Zator in the squad. you got Victor Latore. It's a such an exciting roster from John Birdman, guys. You can't find negative. It's really hard to pick holes in the squad. And why be negative about this Canadian side right now, guys? It makes absolutely no sense. It just got to the World Cup. We weren't, of course, amazing. We still made the world see that Canada is a great squad that is up and coming. We're very young. We're very exciting, guys. This is the Canadian roster, guys. It's a very exciting team. Dual nationals like Tom McGill, Victor Latore, and of course surprises like the likes of Dominic Zator, Iowa Canola, and even Charles Andreas Brim, a fan favorite of mine. But guys, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments about this Canadian roster that's dropped. It's a very exciting team, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And let me know what you guys would have changed or what you guys love. And maybe rate this squad, because for me, guys, it's an easy 8.5. The only difference I probably would have made would maybe be leaving out the legs of Mark Anthony Kay, who has been shocking for Toronto FC, and maybe Iowa Akinola as well. Leave them back, bring in the legs of Jacob Schaffelberg, and even Kyle Heeper, get them enjoying into the squad, get them fully intervened, and let's see how it goes. But guys, I wouldn't change anything fully on the squad. I think it's an 8.5 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. We're three subs away from 100. Let's go make that happen, guys, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.